Did these developers cross the line? If you haven't heard about Wubuntu, you might want to stick around and watch this video. This is a very controversial operating system, guys. These developers took Ubuntu and pretty much turned it into Windows 11. I mean, for all intents and purposes, you'd have a hard time telling that this is not Windows 11. I don't know, guys. Let me know what you think. Did they cross the line? I mean, they're using uh, Wine in the background so you can run Microsoft executables, MSI files. They allow you to integrate directly with your Microsoft account so you can launch OneDrive and other Microsoft integrated tool sets. Uh, this is very interesting, guys. Little history. Kind of started with Linux FX, which really looked like Windows, but it didn't have all the things that you might think would trigger a uh, copyright lawsuit, such as the icons and things of that nature. Ubuntu really took it a step further and pretty much just for all intents and purposes copied the Windows operating system uh, from a graphical standpoint anyway. And then on the back end, like I said, they're using Wine so that you can actually run all these Microsoft applications or Windows applications. So we're going to download it. I'm going to show you guys where to get it, how to install it. And then we're going to take a test drive and see if it really is that close to Windows 11. Let's get started, guys. All right, head on over to this link. It'll be in the description. And then go to Download Free Edition. That should take us to the download page. Now, the one that's going to look the most like the uh, Windows 11 operating system is just going to be the latest one, the Plasma build. Now, if you want more of a uh, Windows 10 feel, grab the um, Ubuntu Cinnamon. That'll give you more of a 10 layout. But today, we're going to take a look at the latest 14.4.4 uh, .4 LTS Windows Ubuntu, a.k.a. Ubuntu Plasma Edition. Let's download it. That'll take us over to SourceForge, the site where you do actually want to click the, the big green button. And we'll let this download. Looks like it's going to be almost 5 gigabytes, so we'll pause the video and come back when that's done. Alright guys, that ISO download did uh, complete. It's actually the next day here, it didn't take that long though. I just had to get to work. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and fire up a virtual machine. You can obviously install this using the ISO on a piece of hardware as well if you're willing to make that big of an investment or leap with Ubuntu, go for it. <laughs> for me, I'm using VMware Workstation Player. I click File, New VM. I'm going to point it to the ISO we downloaded and click Next. I'll just give this a name, Ubuntu. I don't know why that makes me want to say Wasabi every time, but IT Unicorn for my username. Give it a password, confirm that, if I can type. And then I'll point it to give the virtual machine a name. And then I will point it to where I want it. Um, the default's going to be in your documents folder under a subfolder called virtual machines. I do keep a secondary M2 drive for virtual machines, amongst other things. So I'm going to point it there. And then I will create a new folder within that folder called Ubuntu. Wasabi. Click on that folder and that'll be my destination for the virtual machine and all of its files. I believe the documentation said 25 gigs. Uh, I'll just do mine in a single file for now. And then I will customize this just so we shouldn't have any performance issues. 8 gigs of RAM, 4 cores should be sufficient or a Windows 11 Ubuntu knockoff. <laughs> Click Finish, and that should fire up the VM. All right, guys, the VM is booted up. Now, one thing to note here, this is not installed as of yet. This is a live instance. So you'll see here, install system is a option. So if you wanted to keep this around and use it, and be able to save your work as you go and things like that, obviously you'd want to run through the installer. I'm not going to do that this morning, uh, only because I don't plan on keeping this virtual machine long term. And the live instance should be enough for the demonstration. Virtual, I'm sorry, VMware Tools is not installed by default, obviously, and I don't think we can do it through the UI, but let's check. 
yeah, it's going to be grayed out here. So we're going to have to use, uh, or I should say one way to do this would be to use the open VM tools. So we'll take a look at the uh, commands for that. Let's find a terminal. Don't see one in the start menu, so I click on start and I'll search for terminal. And K console, that should do it. And then to install VMware tools, or in this case, open VM tools, we're going to do sudo apt get install, and then it's open VM tools desktop. Hit enter, that should take a second. It'll ask us and say yes. And once this is done, normally it'll automatically uh, resize that resolution for you. But let's see what happens. It did not. Okay. Yeah, it did. It just didn't resize. Okay, good. So that's how you get VM tools on there since you can't do it through the UI. All right. So now that we're in here and we've got a full screen, uh, let's kick the tires on it a bit. First thing I'd like to see if I can do is scale this since I'm on a 4K monitor. It's set to 4K. Let's see, scaling 150. Uh, didn't really see anything happen there. It didn't scale the way Windows usually does, but hey, that's okay. All right, so yeah, when we right-click on the desktop, we get some familiar things here. Display settings, uh, wallpaper. It's very similar, but not identical, right? So um, definitely a very, very polished knockoff, though. Let's look at the taskbar down here. I see Copilot, one thing that jumped right out. I'm guessing this is just going to be a web interface, but let's see. I thought I clicked it. Let's try again. There it is, a little slow. So not as uh, snappy as a normal Windows 11 installation. I guess we should take into account I'm running this as a live OS right now. It's not fully installed. And it's in a virtual machine, but I mean, Tiny 11 is a lot faster. Yeah, just as I expected, this appears to be a web front end here, but still pretty cool. You've got uh, multiple Copilot GPTs in here. Normally it's just the Copilot and the designer. Looks like they've added a few custom uh, vacation planner, cooking assistant, fitness trainer. But yeah, I'm sure you've got a functional Copilot here. Let's see. How far from New York to Las Vegas? Yep, we've got a Copilot that works. I'm not going to. Uh, bore you guys with all that information there. If you want to go from New York to Las Vegas, go ahead and ask Copilot. Gives you a nice map and everything. Very cool. All right, so Copilot works. It's not the built-in application, obviously. It's a web front end or web wrapper there. Let's just take a look down here in the corner. We've got volume, Bluetooth, most recent device, networks. Let's see what's hiding in the system tray here. Notifications, clipboard, vaults, lock key status, IDE connect, display configuration, and power management. So a little, again, a little different than the typical Windows 11 layout, but still uh, not bad. Pretty nice. Okay, it does have Edge. I believe there is a Edge instance for, could be wrong about that, for... Um, Linux. This looks very similar to a Microsoft File Explorer. I believe this is Dolphin they're using. Yeah, so they're using Dolphin for that. Now another thing, or I guess a major thing I should say, you see like OneDrive here, right? Um, a very important thing about Wubuntu is their power toys. Now this is, I guess in their opinion, at least from what I understand about it, in their opinion, this is their special sauce, right? Um, not to jump off track here, but only Office, which makes sense, as opposed to LibreOffice, since they're going for a complete Microsoft Windows knockoff. But I was saying their power toys is what they consider their uh, special sauce, right? So if we go to Control Panel... Uh, 
Um, not sure they're going to have control panel. Yeah, okay. So this is what I was talking about. Power Toys. Now, Power Toys is free. This is my understanding again. It's free for, I think it's 14 days or 30 days. And this is what allows you to launch these Microsoft tools, right? Not, I'm not talking about Windows, EXE, and MSI applications by third parties. I'm talking about the embedded Microsoft tools. They use Wine in the background to install and launch executables and MSI files. This is separate from that. This is their Power Toys, right? So Power Toys allows you to interact with these uh, Microsoft utilities. Again, free for a few days, and then they actually want you to buy this. So they want you to pay for a Microsoft knockoff um, so that you can use knockoff Microsoft embedded utilities. I thought it was kind of funny, um, but I, I'm not going to knock this operating system. I do think it's kind of controversial, a little edgy here, but this obviously took a ton of work and somebody did a great job designing this. Because it really looks like Windows 11. I don't think this would be my cup of tea. If I'm using Linux, I'm using it for all the things that Linux offers. Now, if you need that, plus you need Windows, I don't know. Maybe just use Windows 11 with WSL. But this could be the opposite, opposite side of that coin. You could have an underlying Ubuntu uh, OS with basically windows on top of it right for all intents and purposes um but to me if you're gonna go this far i'd probably just run tiny 11 or something like that what do you guys think though have you checked out wubuntu um again you can run uh, exes on here so if we download a file we can install it let's let's go ahead and do that it should run uh wine it should show us wine Trying to launch Edge here. Not as fast as Windows 11 for sure, but again, like I said, we are running this live. Wow, we've even got the Microsoft give me your data stuff. That's crazy. So this is actually Edge. Um, I'm not sure if this is a Linux version of Edge or if this was installed using Wine. I don't want to sign into Sync. No, thank you. Yeah, definitely not as snappy, but I... Okay, now we have Edge. So let's just download something. Let's download Audacity. Audacity is uh, kind of an old go-to for uh, audio editing. So if you need to edit a audio file, make it louder, um, filter it, stuff like that, Audacity is a great free open source utility to use. This is very slow guys all right this next part guys i sped up at 15 times just because it was so slow to download and install i mean it works but it's so slow so i did us all a favor and just fast forward this okay so yeah the application worked so it's definitely functional let me know what you guys think did they cross the line here um is there a use case for this? Would you ever use it? I think it's a very novel idea, I think, as far as pranking someone to say, yeah, I run Windows 11 and then start doing a bunch of stuff that Linux can do. I mean, other than that, I'm not sure, at least for me, I'm not sure why I would use this. Uh, did want to cover it, though, because like I said, it's very interesting what they're doing here. And I wonder how many people are paying for these power toys. So if you want to keep all this functionality long term, you would have to subscribe. I'm not sure how much it was. I think it was like 40 bucks. And I don't know if that was one time or ongoing. But um, if you guys are interested, obviously, you probably want to research that. But very interesting stuff here, guys. Let me know what your thoughts are. Um, are you using Wubuntu? 
now that you've seen it, maybe it's the first time, are you going to try Wubuntu? Um, and yeah, maybe give me a comment. What do you think the use case for anyone would be for Wubuntu? All right, guys. Um, if this is still around and they haven't been sued by Microsoft, give it a shot. Let me know what you think. All right, guys. I appreciate you sticking around to the end of the video. Do me a favor. Hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe. Share this video and or others on my channel with your friends. Uh, trying to build the community up to 10,000 subscribers this year. We're well on our way, but we still need to uh, ramp up the velocity here, so to speak, in the last seven months or so of the year to get to that 10K goal. So yeah, do those things if you want to support my channel. And if you really want to support me and my channel, consider heading over to my shop at bootableusbs.com. Pick yourself up one of the uh, greatest USBs on the face of the earth. You won't regret it. It's jam-packed with all kinds of tools. If you're into IT and learning and things like that, uh, pick one up. I'll ship it out tomorrow. Head over there for more information and let me know if you guys have any questions. All right, guys. This was Ubuntu. Uh, quick how to get it running on a virtual machine and a quick review. Let me know what your thoughts are, guys. Have a great day.